Hello everyone, it's me, Doomlink, and I'd like to welcome you all, finally, to Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Here we are. Now, why do I say finally? The reason why is because I've been wanting to record this game for around four years now, and I have not been able to. The reason why back then was because I was simply unable to record my 3DS. I would have to get a physical mod into the 3DS itself, and to be honest, by the time I was willing to maybe do that, I was not quite so willing to play the game itself. In fact, even having said that, I really just don't. I don't think I was ever quite willing to get a physical mod into my 3DS, but hey, here we are. At a much better level of quality than, say, on the 3DS. Because even if you do record the 3DS, it's not like you're getting a good view. It's pretty damn awful, actually. The game looks like absolute trash on the 3DS. Not only when you're recording it, but also when you're playing it on the physical system. I'm sorry, but the only reason why anyone could possibly look at this game on 3DS and decide that it looks good is if they are either kidding themselves or if they've just become so used to horrendous graphics that it actually looks good to them. But here we are with good graphics here. And not only that, but I'm able to finally show you my character on Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, which I've been wanting to do for a very long time, because I've been able to show you my Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate character, my Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate character, my Monster Hunter World characters, my Unite character, my Portable 3rd character, but I've never been able to show you my 4 Ultimate character, because it has always been exclusively on the 3DS, which is a system that I cannot record, and still to this day cannot record. What you're seeing right now is in Citra, which is a very... Well, it's an emulator which is improving almost by the month, I would say, when it comes to being able to emulate 3DS games, and it is currently at a very good point in time when it comes to emulating for Ultimate. And that is the reason why I finally went ahead and transferred all of my stuff from my 3DS to my PC so that I could not only play the game on Citra, but also use my original save. So, the way in which I did that was actually by putting custom firmware onto my 3DS. And that took a long time. It's incredible because I had to do the same thing with the PSP, you know, transfer my save over. That's what I had to do for both the 3DS and the PSP, obviously. But the difference was, on the PSP it took me the best part of two minutes, but on the 3DS, it took me the best part of two and a half hours. So, thanks Nintendo. Regardless, after a long process, which has resulted in my 3DS being, like, fully homebrewed and whatever, well, however you want to refer to that, it does have the homebrew channel and all of that, but, um, has a lot of other things on it as well. So I suppose that's a good thing. Maybe I'll get some use out of my 3DS now, because I'll be able to get free games or some shit, I don't know. But the whole reason why I did that was so that I could dump the game cartridge and use, what was it called, Checkpoint, to be able to bring my save data and my extra data over to this game. So, it's, I will mention also that as I'm recording here, the game itself is in a strange as aspect ratio, so you'll have to forgive the game for that. Also, I have a pretty damn good PC system, but running this game really does challenge my PC. It was really smooth before, but now it's not quite as smooth. I'm just going to um, zoom out here and show you this screen, because I'm going to the Elder Hall, because I'm going to do a quick quest, because I don't want to uh, waste your guys' time too much. But after the quest, I'll probably show you all of my armor sets, because I've been wanting to showcase this particular character for a long time, because I've put a decent amount of time into this character. I can show you the guild card, and I will show the um, other screen as well, the smaller screen. The current setup that I have is like a medium-sized screen for the top screen, and then a smaller one next to it, which is a lot better than a top-to-bottom sort of view. You can see this is my uh, weapon usage here. And I have a total of 489 hours on this account. And that's the situation. It's all very good. I've played this game a decent amount, but I haven't actually played it for a long time, you see. So what we're doing here is... Well, we'll probably do... 
I was thinking of Berserk Tetsukabra. Now, the reason why is because I have not actually fought Berserk Tetsukabra in a very, very long time. I've never really had a reason to fight him. So, here I am, giving him a shot. I don't really know what I should get. Let's just get this crap. Doesn't really matter. I just need the health boost at this point. So what I'm probably going to do is actually put my headphones on. I didn't have them on, but I'll put them on this time. Because I do want to hear the game. And I'll drop down the volume for that. But, um, certainly, I'm very, very happy now that my game save is not on the 3DS. I don't have to leave my game save at the mercy of my 3DS system. The reason why I wasn't comfortable with that was because I was leaving my 3DS for very long periods of time just not being played. I wasn't necessarily worried about it breaking or anything like that, but... To start with, the entire reason why I wasn't even playing this game was because it was on the 3DS console. There was no other real reason as to why I wasn't playing it. There are a number of things about 4 Ultimate that I'm not hugely a fan of, but you have to understand that when the game makes my eyes want to bleed, well, actually makes my eyes almost bleed, my eyes are not sentient and therefore don't want anything, but the point being, aside from my stupid ways in which I describe things, the 3DS is not a pleasant system to play Monster Hunter on, is what I'm basically trying to get across here. And when you have that factor on top of anything that you might dislike about this game, it makes it really easy to either have a problem with this game, or at the very least not even play it. So, I should have just gone for the full charge there, because I do have high-grade earplugs, which you should have. Either rock-steady or high-grade earplugs is necessary with a great sword set. Unless you're fighting a monster that doesn't roar, like a Camellios or something. But yeah, it's very interesting to just be able to play this game on camera with my original save, because you have to understand that I've always, or at least since I got this game, I've been regularly recording videos, and I was never able to record this game, so here I am, finally, after many years, able to do that. Now, I will be trying the online play out. I don't know what to expect with that. I don't know if it runs smoothly through Citra. But one thing I can tell you is that it is the intention of the person behind Hunstiverse to get Citra servers up and running in Hunstiverse, much like there are servers for the PPSP versions of the game. Well, in the game series, so you have uh, Monster Hunter Freedom 1, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, and Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. If you've ever used Hunstiverse with those games, you will know that they run very smoothly. So, it would be excellent if we could get the same sort of situation with Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate through Citra, and by extension Monster Hunter Double Cross. But, as far as when that's going to happen, I don't know. It would also be great if we could get the same thing with 3 Ultimate, but I've got no idea if I would actually be able to transfer my save over from 3 Ultimate into the PC. I would need to homebrew my Wii most likely, or sorry, my Wii U. But as far as I know, that's very difficult to do. Unless you own, like... It might be a Smash Brothers game that you need to own, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm thinking of the original Wii. Got a yappy dog outside, but we're just going to ignore him. No, get out of there. I was meaning to dive, but it didn't really work so well. It's very interesting to fight this guy. I really, honestly, I probably have a very small number of Berserk Tetsukra... Tetsukabra is killed. <laughs> Can't even say his name. No, but I'd say... I mean, can I see my... I think I can see my monster list. Okay, let's find Berserk Tetsukabra. Where are you? Because I bet... Of Okay, six. I wasn't even expecting as many as six, so... Yeah. For the most part, while I'm recording this, and I haven't really properly run this through an editing software yet, I did give it a try. But the aspect ratio is a little strange, so you'll have to forgive that. It's not really something that I can control. You'll have to ask Nintendo about that one. Why did you make your 3DS screen look like that? I don't know. Of course, there's no problem whatsoever with the uh, PSP aspect ratio, but anyway. We won't uh, get into details about that. I could actually go on forever about how much I hate the 3DS, but we won't do that. I think the fact that I never played this game for the sole purpose... Well, I stopped playing this game for the best part of three years. I think the main reason why as you are aware, is because of the 3DS being the system that it's played on. And I think that alone is enough of an indication as to how I feel about the 3DS, so I'm not actually going to go into huge details about why I don't like that system, but yeah. So what was I saying before? I was trying to get into some discussion, but... 
Regardless, I'm currently running the Greatsword, which is my favourite weapon type. And, well, it's not my favourite weapon type necessarily, but as far as Blade Master weapons are concerned, this is the one that I feel most comfortable with. When it comes to actually playing Monster Hunter, I feel most comfortable when I'm using a ranged weapon like a light bow gun, heavy bow gun. And these days even a bow. I've never been much of a bow guy. I've actually never even once used a bow in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and I can show you my guild card to prove that. And the reason why was because I heard that you needed to press R to shoot. Now, in my stupidity, I had no idea that there was an option in the menu that allowed you to change whether it was R to shoot or X to shoot, which is pretty f fucking hilarious if you think about it, because it was through Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate that I realized that that might be possible in this game as well. Because I was thinking, well, if you're allowed to change that in Generations Ultimate, why would they not have that ability in this game? And so I had a look through these settings, and hey, it was there. So I've been complaining for the longest time about Artishoot shoot being a thing, when in fact I was never at any time forced to actually play the bow in that way. So that's kind of funny. You can see here that the game is running quite smoothly, but I have to stress that it does require pretty good PC specs to be able to run this game at 60 FPS. Even at 30 FPS, you'll probably need some pretty good specs. That's the reason why not many people play Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate on Citra. It's for the simple reason that you do need a pretty decent PC to be able to handle it. As far as I know, 4 Ultimate in particular is quite PC heavy. It's not as heavy in 3 Ultimate, I don't think. And perhaps even Double Cross is not quite so bad. But 4 Ultimate in particular, to my knowledge, and my knowledge is limited, uh, 4 Ultimate is a standout heavy game to actually run. Anyway, I'm using the Kirin frickin' uh, greatsword here, which I often don't use, I mean, really. I think that with its super high element, but not such high raw damage, it's not something that I would use normally. But how I logically look at it is that because I'm hitting the monster less often, it's better to have higher element. But then as well as that, I have the ability to hone my weapon in this game so I can give it more attack if I want to. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the stats of this weapon, as I have them now. So let me double check that, because I'm interested. So, 1416 attack, which is fairly good for a greatsword. Like, at that point, you're looking at good damage. It can be anywhere between 1200 and 1800 comfortably with a greatsword. It can be less, can be more, but that's kind of the range. So if I'm doing that much damage with the thing right now, plus 860 element. I mean, that's absolutely solid, so I'm happy with that. As far as soloing this G-ranked monster, I shouldn't have too many problems with it. It won't take much more than 10 minutes, I don't believe, despite the fact that I'm playing kind of weird, but you have to understand I'm doing a commentary as well. But um, because he's sort of at the lower levels of G-rank, I should be fine. Plus, I'm doing a lot of damage, so I don't really have much of an excuse to kill him in, like, 15 minutes or something. It might end up being that way, though. Honestly, have no idea. But anyway, I'm going to be trying to play this game online. Once again, I've never tried it before, so I'd like to see how smooth it is. At the moment, it's doing it through Citra. God, you're annoying. Uh, Citra has its own multiplayer support, I suppose you could call it. It has a little system where you can play multiplayer, and it seems pretty cool, actually. Because if you register in the forums, it's not necessary to register in the Citra forums, but if you do register in those forums, you get a little... you can actually upload your own profile picture, and that's visible in the multiplayer interface within the Citra emulator, as far as I know, so I'm definitely down for that. So aesthetically, it's probably quite nice. You can see there are some... there's like this Konshu who's stuck to Tetsukabra's arm. I would actually like to mount you if I could. Oh, you're leaving the area. I shouldn't need to paintball you, I think you just go in a straight line the entire time. I might actually sharpen here. Now, as far as playing this game in 60 FPS, it's not necessarily a requirement. It feels good, yeah, but I'd rather drop it down to 30, to be honest, while recording just generally, so... Mainly because to be able to record like this, I need to really set up the recording, you see, because otherwise my PC is just not going to be able to handle it. If I'm running Chrome in the background and lots of other applications like Vegas Pro, by the time I'm recording, and then also playing this game at 60 FPS, I just can't really run it smoothly, so it's actually really quiet. 
damn it. But yeah, it's really quite heavy on the computer, so. And just for reference, if you want to know, like, what I'm using, it's a 1080 Ti with an i7-7700K, so what that should indicate to you is that this game is pretty rough if I can... I mean, even with a system like this, it can challenge my system, so... Point being that if you don't have a good system yourself, you probably won't even be able to run the game. As long as you've got a reasonable system, I would say... I mean, they recommend in Citra, or well, perhaps not at Citra, but definitely to... In certain guides for 4 Ultimate, at the very least, they do recommend a 970 minimum, which is unbelievable, but I'm sure you'd be able to run at something weaker than that, it's just that I suppose it's not recommended. <laughs> so, uh, you can see I'm doing a decent amount of damage to this guy. I'm sure I'd be able to kill him faster, but once again, I'm just... It's a bit of a warm-up fight, in fact. I really do not play this game often. <laughs> The last time I actually launched the game was sometime in early 2018 when I was playing with some friends, and at that point that was the first time I'd launched the game in more than a year even then. So, yeah. And that was a year ago, so... Really, I just don't play this game anymore. When I was playing it, I was also sort of playing in bursts. I'd have maybe like a month-long burst where I would play the game a lot, and then I would just stop for a long time. That's kind of how I do it with Monster Hunter, or at least that's how I've done it since Try, because I sort of burnt myself out on Try, and so... 3 Ultimate was the same, I'd play in large bursts and then just stop for a long time. That's why I feel that I could have played 3 Ultimate more than I did, but in the end, the time that I would spend away from the game was just so great that I really didn't do as much in that game as I honestly wanted to. I'm just not doing the heavy slam attack, by the way, because I want to keep getting consistent damage out while not, I suppose, committing to a specific combo. So this guy is limping. I might go for a capture. What do I have? I don't even know. Yeah, so I do have stuff to capture, fortunately. And here are some Y-stones. I mean, really, it's kind of weird to see the Y-stone business going on. I think I need to go down here. Let's just go down here. But yeah, Y-stones are a thing that only existed in 4 Ultimate. It's just one of those strange throwaway things that Capcom came up with. Did it for one game, then just got rid of it. And I'd say that was for the better. I'm not really a huge fan of the Y-Stone thing, but anyway. I'm just going to capture you to speed things up a little bit, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'm actually asking whether or not the Tetsukabra would mind if I captured him. Just get away from me, man. I need to capture you. Alright, I'll put the trap far away. The reason why I don't want to put the trap far away is that I don't want him to actually... Uh... Oh no. Don't you... Okay, good. He was going for an, an eating attack there. Now, the situation with... Um, the emulation is that at certain points in time you will drop frames heavily. It's generally at the start of a quest. As you saw there, I dropped frames heavily during quest complete. I would say that has to do with the emulation itself rather than your system. So, there's not much that you can do about that. I don't think if I had a system that were twice as good as what I have right now, I think I would still be getting poor frames at that moment in time, but uh, I'll go ahead and show you my actual setups here. In fact, I'll show you an armor set that I built just yesterday. And I will show you the smaller screen for this as well, because it is necessary. And I'm not a huge fan of the whole two-screen thing, it's just, it's annoying, I know, but... The thing is, there's no alternative to that, so... That's just how the game is designed. It's a double-screen sort of thing. This is my Rocksteady Greatsword set. It doesn't have critical draw, which sort of bothers me now that I'm looking at it. I haven't really properly looked at these sets in a very long time. But hey, it has Honed Blade, Rocksteady, Quick Sheath, and Focus. Which is pretty good for a Greatsword set, regardless. God, I... Anyway, I was getting gassy, don't worry about it. Now, this is the set that I used for that fight right there. This is my high-grade earplug set. This one does have critical draw. Has a little bit of attack up, but not much at all. And it's uh, generally a pretty good armor set overall. This is my Gunland set. Has Artillery God, which I believe is a... Is that a 30-point skill? I think so. Let me actually double-check that. I'll have a look now. You can see that I'm using the fully upgraded Gold Raytheon Gunlance, which is a very, very good weapon. Always love that weapon. 
667 attack with 450 poison with a lot of purple sharpness. So that is freaking cool. Anyway, we'll see... No, it's actually a 20 point skill. Okay. So obviously, Artillery God is a superior version of Artillery Expert. So I would assume that Artillery Expert increases the damage of your shells from the Gun Lance, but Artillery Novas does not, because that's how it used to work. It used to be um, Artillery something or other, like, what was it again? Artillery Expert, I think. Before that it was Gunnery, but the idea was that it was Expert then King, I think. Now it's gone Novas Expert God, I think. I could be wrong about that, though. Because there are a lot of games, and they do change the names from time to time, so I do sort of lose track of what's what. This is my hunting horn set. It's fairly good. It's a high-grade earplug set, so I would like to maybe make a hunting horn set that doesn't have high-grade earplugs for the times when I'm actually using a hunting horn that has high-grade earplugs as a song. So, yeah, I'll probably do that. Could also do a rock steady hunting horn set. The thing is, I have a lot of pages of stuff that I can use here. Like, I have a lot of sets that I can make at this point. This is my hammer set. It's pretty normal. It has high-grade earplugs, knockout king, weakness exploit, attack up small, sharpness plus one. The fire is plus 15. It's just thrown in there as an extra. I think it... I didn't even gem that in, I don't think. It's just sort of sitting there. It might be from the talisman. I'm not sure. But anyway, why not fire res? <laughs> not that I need it. I have... Minus in all the, these other things, but um, apparently I needed extra fire res as well. Great. Anyway, this is my evasion set. It has evasion plus three, which was something that was first introduced in this game. A plus three skill for evasion, which is just absolutely insane. But hey, it works pretty well. I forgot what benediction even does. Let's have a look at that, shall we? It is... Okay, it's health recovery up, I think. And is that Divine Blessing? I'm just... Yeah, it's Health Wreck and Divine Blessing. That's what it is. So, overall, this is a pretty good set. This is the set that you want to use if you don't want to be touched by anything. And even if you do get touched by something, you'll be pretty good. So, yeah. Good set. If you don't want to uh, be touched by anyone. And this is my Element set, which is one of my more insane sets. Challenger plus two, latent power plus two, honed blade, speed sharpening, and element attack up. Now, this is absolutely insane. And this is a really good example of what Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is like. You can get some pretty good sets in this game. It's quite amazing. This is my Insect Glaive set. It uses the Star Knight, which is recommended, because the Star Knight is very good. It has exactly the sort of skills that you need for an Insect Glaive. Or just in general, if you are wanting to mount monsters, it's very good. Challenger plus two, high grade earplugs, rodeo god, sharpness plus one, and steady hand. If I can get a refresh on what steady hand does, I believe it's very good. So it's mind's eye and razor sharp, which is freaking good. So this set overall is very, very nice. So let me just, um, what is it? It's equip a set. God, I'm being retarded. Anyway, so here's my lance set. This one is kind of interesting. I don't know how I feel about it. It has honed blade, which is really good, of course, but it doesn't have gun plus two, which sort of makes countering a bit pointless because generally I'm flinching too hard on the counter, so... Or at the very least, I'm getting knocked back too hard by the counter to really be able to return the attack. At least not within a decent period of time. It takes too long, is what I'm saying. But yeah, we've got Critical Eye plus two, Honed Blade, Guard Boost, and Speed Sharpening. It's alright, but I might get another Lance set as well. Not to replace this one, but just something different. This is my... Well, this is a set that relies on a Relic Greatsword, which actually has Honed Blade on it. Edge Master plus five, I think it was. It's Latent Power plus two, Honed Blade, Critical Draw, Rock Steady, and Focus. Generally, I probably wouldn't use this set Except for the fact that it has Honed Blade and Critical Draw, which is not what my other Greatsword sets do. It's either one or the other. Also has Latent Power plus two, just in case I needed even more critical damage. And it also has Rock Steady and Focus. So I guess if I'm fighting an enemy that is uh, 
well, I don't know. Perhaps this would be better. Because I can use any weapon, whereas this is required. Well, you require that guild weapon, so I don't know. I'm not really huge into the guild quest thing, but relics are just, ugh. I'm not into it. Rodeo God, Critical Eye plus two, Hone Blade, Guts, and Enlightened Blade. Now, Enlightened Blade, I remember what that does. It's Awaken plus Element Attack plus one, or... Well, it has both Element Attack plus one and Status Attack plus one, so... It's actually a pretty nice set. This one is the GX Crimson Fatalis set, and it's just a nice set to slap on if you want to do some good damage without really having to worry too much about anything. I quite like it. It's just... You know, something a little bit different. It's just a general use sort of set, I guess you could say. Actually, no, this isn't a general use set. I'm thinking of um, the White Fatalis set. This is a general use set, whereas this one is specifically for Awaken weapons. And yet I don't even have an Awaken weapon equipped here, so... Anyway, obviously I haven't really been using this set very much. So I've been calling this just Fatalis. I should call it C Fatalis. In fact, let's edit that right now. We'll uh, add C. C Fatalis. There we go. This is my Anat set. This one is sort of... It's a choice between the Anat set and the Gold Wraithian set as far as being able to get stuff from monsters more easily. Bounty Hunter is pretty good. Let me just double check what that does because that's reasonable. So it's like Capture Master and Great Luck, is it? I think so. And if that is the case, then that is pretty good. I can't deny that. Whereas the Gold Wraithian set, Miraculous Luck, that's another level of luck, I guess. So if I wanted a lot more luck, then I could do that. But this is required, like, what's... Oh, hoarding, fuck that. I don't even need this weapon. On this set. That's good to know. I thought this was a weapon dependent set, but it's actually not. It's just some random paralysis longsword, which, as you can see, it has a decent amount of attack, but it can be leveled up even further. I think it's a pretty good weapon. So, Miraculous Luck and Capture God. I mean, okay, now that I think about it, this is probably better because I don't believe that it's Miraculous Luck and Capture God when you have Bounty Hunter. I would say it's the plus 15 of both skills. So actually this is... and then you have Part Breaker as well, so maybe this set would be better than the Anad set, but anyway. Going to look at the White Fate Talent set, Critical God, which is like... that has to at least be a plus 30 skill, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's plus 30, which is crazy. And, um, you know, it's alright. What is my... oh. Really? It's only plus 30 fucking... That's not even a good skill at all, really, but, um, anyway, plus 30. Affinity, why not? Constitution plus 2, which is pretty fun to use. Honed Blade, Peak Performance, and Bad Luck. This is my set for when I don't really care what I'm getting from the monster. Uh, so we have... I've looked at all of this, yeah. So that's the status set that I have. It's quite similar to my other set over here, except this one's a bit more insane. This one doesn't have... Uh, Challenger plus two or latent power plus two, but this is the best that I was able to do as far as an equivalent is concerned This one is another evasion set, which I have it's actually all right Except that evade extender is not really necessary because generally when it comes to evasion skills I want to either be rolling through the attack or away from the attack If I'm doing both it sort of fucks me up a little bit, but I'd say with evasion plus three and evade extender how that would work is that your entire evade animation would be invincibility frames, I would say, with evade extender. So I would say that with evasion plus three, evade extender is actually worthwhile. But uh, attack up medium, sharpness plus one, and speed sharpening. So that's pretty cool. And the rest of these are just sort of throwaway sets that I used to have. This one here is... Uh, I guess that's my old hunting horn set, which is okay. It has status, actually. It's not too bad. I suppose I can still use that. Oh no, I'm, I was looking at this. Yeah. Okay, so they're actually more or less the same set. This is when I was using Grand Mizuha, because I think Grand Mizuha was my first endgame G-rank set. And so I was using it to do this stuff. You can see it's actually pretty pretty reasonable. Two status sets, more or less. But uh, now we'll go to the gunner side. 
which is over here. This is my heavy pierce set. It's actually dealing a lot of fucking damage because, I mean, if you just look at the skills, attack up XL, recoil down, plus two evade, extender, pierce up, it's like, okay, well, great. You're doing a decent amount of damage. But then you look at the attack value of this thing. 700 is doing a lot of fucking damage. To put it into perspective, the crouch fire pierce gun that people often use online, because, you know, people do have certain sets that they all use. It's like you have a standard. Well, that's the Gravios. Um... Why am I saying Gravios? I never... Or is it Gravios that I often say? I was thinking of how I normally pronounce that. Yeah, Gravios, I guess. But, um... That has around 560 attack, whereas this has 700. And I can get these shots out very fast with recoil down plus two. So, seriously, this is a very good set for getting a lot of damage out. This is the normal equivalent using the exact same gun. So you can see here that... It's pretty much the same set, except I've dropped recoil down plus two, because, of course, normal shots don't have recoil. Neither do element shots. So that's how that works. It's a very nice set as well. And the weakness exploit is very necessary, I would say, for a normal set. Because the whole idea with normal is that you want to have centralized damage on the weak points, so therefore weakness exploit is the way to go. This is my light pierce set, which I actually love. It's actually such a nice set to use. It's one of my favorites because of the amount of affinity I have on this thing. 70% affinity. I'm actually wanting to make an equivalent set to this in Generations Ultimate at some point. But uh, pretty much I can shoot, I can rapid fire um, Pierce Level 2 at a huge level of um, affinity. Like it's just really, really nice. And I think, is that four shots? God, I love this set. It's really, really satisfying to use, and you've got bonus shot as well on this set, and Critical God, you know, the whole the whole deal, basically. You have an extremely good chance with every single one of these shots being a critical hit, which is a big deal with a pierce shot, because that's a critical on every single impact that it has, so I really like this set. Now, this is my... This is, um... Single normal, really. I didn't even know that I was using the Absolute Bow Gun for this. So this is what I use when I just want to do a light... Uh, a light bow gun normal set. So it's Challenger plus two, load up, Ruthlessness, and normal attack up. Now, Ruthlessness is the combined skill which has Weakness, Exploit, and something else in it. Let me see what it is. So it's Weakness, Exploit, and Increased inf Affinities. That's actually pretty cool. So let me just make sure that... Because it does change depending on the game. But weakness exploit in this game should be increased damage, not increased affinity. Or increased affinity. Yes, so it is increased damage, so that's good. I always prefer increased damage rather than increased affinity, because increased affinity is sort of... is chance-based, whereas increased damage is very consistent. So that's what I like. This is my rapid normal set, which I also use for slicing shots. As you can see, it's the value sedition, which is very, very nice. You can just sort of evade around the place and automatically reload your shots one by one. It's so nice to use. Very, very fun. I use normal a lot with this, but as I said before, slicing is extremely good with this set. I like it a lot. Now, this is my elemental light bow gun, which I think I can improve on this. Or which I think I can improve on. It's pretty decent, but I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to do something with it. But as far as how it works functionally at the moment, it's very good. So, yeah, I'm cool with that. And this is the set that I actually made yesterday. This is a status set, which makes use of a very, very good talisman. Now, this set is insane because if I actually read out all the skills, so we have Load Up, Combination plus 20%, Sneak, Divine Blessing, Reload Speed plus 2, and Status Attack plus 2. Of course, Reload Speed plus 2 is very good with this gun because it has slow reloads, so... I have a silencer on it as well, just to make it much better to shoot status shots. I still have decent recoil. Well, I say decent recoil. Like, a lot of recoil on my level 2 shots, but I have no recoil at all on my level 1 shots. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I've got with this set. And I have status crit as well, don't I? I'm supposed to have status crit. Where's status crit? That's, like, that's a funny thing that I didn't even realise, so... Obviously, I've done something wrong with this. Wait. Crit status. I'm missing, like, what? 
let's look at my skills. I have an extra Divine Blessing thing, so... Did I gem that in or something? No, I didn't. Well, that's balls. No, I did. I did do that. So I have an extra two points of Divine Blessing. Instead of... That's weird. That means Athena lied to me. Athena actually lied to me, guys. I didn't need extra Divine Blessing. Oh. It's because... Okay. That's what it is. It's because I've put the wrong... Okay. It's because it's torso up. Now I understand. <laughs> this is funny. I can do this on camera with you guys. When it comes to torso up, I often forget what I'm doing with this shit. I had just completely forgotten that it was a torso up sort of situation. So, what have we got here? Need to go to our equipment. And you're able to hear that the music has slowed down heavily because in this particular area, it's quiet heavy on the system. I don't know what's going on in this area which is so heavy for the system, but it is heavy. So we want to put the crit status jewel here and then the asylum jewel here. Now we should have crit status as well. <laughs> what a fucking set. What a fucking set. Seriously. Mwah. Just incredible. So all of that plus status crit because we do have the 15% on here. Absolutely excellent. Anyway, let's go register that. So, that is the set that I built yesterday. So I'm still getting a lot of enjoyment out of this game. And that's very nice. And I do have plans to do a lot more in this game as well, so... Yeah. When I do get the opportunity to record this game while playing with other people, I will take that opportunity. And I'll upload it as a Doom Link's Random Hunts part. Because I would love to finally have four ultimate in Doom Link's Random Hunts. That would be great. Because once again, it's been pretty much since I started that series in October of 2015. And before that point, since I've been wanting to uh, record this game. So, yeah, definitely that would be good. But anyway, thank you all for watching. This has been Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. And this is the first time that I've actually been able to show you guys my character on 4 Ultimate, so I'm happy that I'm able to make this video and just show you guys all of that. But anyway, I will catch you guys when I'm next playing Monster Hunter, or 4 Ultimate more specifically, and I will see you at that time. It is the 8th of February 2019 as I'm recording this, and I will bid you all farewell. Bye-bye.